Oh my good oh, golly! Wow. It's that time of the night, boys and girls. Welcome Good yourselves all around to our offices, the Wolf Den Podcast. How are you? Step in, won't you? How are you doing, yes. Will, today? Um, I'm fantastic. How are you, Robert, on this this fine Tuesday night? I'm a I'm good. Uh I'm a little late and I blamed the chat. Uh and I think they deserve it. But uh, yeah. there's two two reasons why I'm late. Uh uh one, a little a little bit of car troubles hanging yeah, around. You, you shut up, Italian lady, you're not supposed so to talk on the podcast. L a little a little a little hectic driving around New York City, you know? Uh yeah. also I wanted to make coffee and it took me a while. So there's As that. You do. That's okay, because while you were doing that, I was dealing with a temper tantrum with my almost two-year-old. So we're all good. Everything worked out in the end. <laughs> Every we're all good. We're all here. Everything's yeah. great. Uh, also, we're gonna test out something. We're gonna do one of the bounty board ads. Uh, I think bounty Ooh. boards on Twitch are stupid, but uh, we're gonna <laughs> test one out just to see what happens. <laughs> uh, but we'll do that later. Probably, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Bob, you drive? No, I was being driven. Uh, I'm I'm very grateful to have to have good friends here. <laughs> anyway, we have a lot to talk about today. The main topic of the day is that Nintendo will give you a little summary of how you did on your Switch this year, and yes. we're gonna look at ours. Past couple of years, they've been doing this past couple of years, and it's that time of of the season where they remind you that they're doing it again. Yeah, and uh, we always look at it every year, but we always rush through it. And I want I this is a I think this is a yeah. good opportunity to take our time with it. Yeah, because like we can talk about what we played, why we played it, and just reminisce on the year that was twenty twenty one. And if it's not enough content, we can talk about everything else that happened with the Switch this year. <laughs> yeah. Um. Somebody in what did I see? I sniped something in the chat there. Oh, switched wrapped? Question mark. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Um. Anyway, oh, there's other things we got to talk about, like uh, oh, Banjo Kazooie, Game mm -hmm. Awards announcement. So we got to talk about that. Let's put that yeah. right at the top. Uh, honestly, very disappointing Game Awards this year. Yeah, I was watching your live stream actually, and I'm just like, it's all right. Like the yeah. only exciting things were like some of the game announcements. The actual awards themselves were like, who cares, really? I, I, honestly, I think uh, you were the only person I thought might have been excited about the game awards announcements. But we will we'll get into it. We'll get into that. Um, we have a lot of notifications from you people. We got uh, Crad right, White yeah. Wings with eight months. Let's go. Time sure goes quick. Will I see you in PAX East? Yes, I will be there. Uh, I don't. I haven't planned anything yet, but I will be there. It's in. It's in April. Um, okay. Rye Bread. Thank you for the three months. Been gone so long. I got unsubbed. What the hell is wrong with you, dude? Well, Come see, on, that's why we send out notifications like you will be banned if you don't watch this episode. Yes. So we remind you to get your ass in gear. Yes, yes. Um, we got Spoopy Girl with nine months. Thank you very much. We got Trap with 13 months. 13 months, yay. Jeffrey Sorensen with 11 months. Can I be unbanned now? No, you were late to the podcast. You're still banned. Uh, P.S. Happy holidays, bros and fans. Thank you. See, Thank we you. can be late. You can't be. Yeah. You we run the show. 8 p.m. Eastern time sharp. <laughs> Uh, Circa RVN, thank you for the four months. Y'all need to be do an in person episode sometime for old times' sake. I feel like we should do like a crowdfunded, like a uh, like like live show. That'd be fun. I can get behind that. We'll uh, we we got some logistical things we could figure out. Yeah. What we we need like a goal, like episode one hundred, maybe. Maybe We're is the office set 61? up for live streaming wanna... yet or? Oh, it's set up. Not you don't for want like, to do it there. No, no, no. If you were to come in and do it like together, then absolutely we could do that. But right. if we're gonna have like a crowd of people, I don't oh, know like one of oh, oh. I thought he just meant like, you know, the two of us, the two of us in a room together. I didn't oh, know. No. Just talking about like friggin', you know, stadium. No, no, that we could absolutely do. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, thank you all for the, uh, 
for the notifications here. Anyway, if you have Amazon Prime, hey, man, that's a free way to support us. You can link it to your Twitch account. Yeah. Otherwise, Jeff Bezos is getting your 350 or whatever it is. Yeah. And then he th uh, that funds another trip to the moon or whatever the fu fuck he's doing in space. Yeah, where instead you can you can fund our Uber Eats fund. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it's expensive to get Carvel from Uber, Uber Eats, let me tell you. And, so, and sometimes you just have to. Yes. Life's really hard. It to is. Be, to, to, Life, to life's be really hard for a straight white man who lives privileged in the Privileged middle class, yes, yeah, suburbanite. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yuck, yuck, yuck. Yeah. Let's go through our uh, Nintendo Switch year, this year. Now, I'm pretty interested i guess i'll do mine first uh i don't do you have a way to share your screen uh maybe well you figure that out yeah so yes uh discord has a way to oh, do yeah. it make sure you don't have anything incriminating on your screen before you do it yeah hold on and don't do it yet i'll do mine first and then we'll then we'll go yeah i'm yours. just i'm gonna be honest my, oh. i would i i think you probably played more stuff the stuff that I played is I, the same shit over and over again. I don't know, man. I was surprised by how little... Uh, the, the the amount of time I spent on the Switch was not as much as I thought. I'm going to drop this in the chat. Uh, it's the link so you can check your own, too, while you're while you're going on. It's switch.nintendo.com slash year dash in dash review. So, uh... Most so I almost only play my Switch when I'm streaming. Not gonna lie. So this shouldn't really surprise anybody if you watch my streams. Let's see. Uh I just hit the play button. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'll leave it on screen. There you go. If it the play button it's like automated, so it'll go to the next slide on its own. I mean it's well designed so far. This is beautiful. Yeah. Check out all the fun you had. Well, now I got to pause because I can't read. Check out all the fun you had. Let's look at the time spent playing the Nintendo Switch system in 2021 and see how it stacked up against last year. Thanks for making us part of your well-rounded free time. Free time. This is work, buddy. Day one with <laughs> Nintendo Switch, March 5th? What? The Switch came oh, out the March 3rd. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mine says the exact same thing. Okay. I got my Switch well after you. Okay, good. That makes me feel better. Because I definitely played it the second it came out. I remember going to GameStop and grabbing mine. And it yeah. wasn't a midnight release, but I do... Did I wait two days to get my Switch? You did, because you were, you were out of state. So I had to go and get it. Really? Wait, no, I went, oh, I went to GameStop yeah. to pre-order it. Yeah. I had to where go and actually pick it up. Where the fuck was I? Was I at PAX? In March. You might have been at PAX, yeah. PAX, what a what a piece of garbage. I might have waited two whole days to get my Switch. Anyway, we last updated your status on December 12th. That was two days ago. Yeah. I played it today. Actually, I think I played the Switch offline today because I had to... <laughs> I did some things for a video. Right, anyway, right. Uh, I guess we're just hitting next. Mm-hmm. Mine says uh, Jeffrey Sorensen says mine says March third. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh boy. You played fifty six games. Wait, what? Like <laughs> different types of games? I played fifty six in guess. this year. I should know. Like it should be noted that they count like Super Nintendo Switch Online. And like the Genesis online collection, they count that as one game. Oh my god! <laughs> that I was, I was like, okay, that makes sense. I played different games in those collections. No, this doesn't no. make any sense. Yeah, I, I did not think I played this much. Because, like, a uh, spoiler alert, I like went through this beforehand, and it said mm -hmm. my second most played game of the year was Super Nintendo Switch Online. <laughs> this is this is pretty crazy. Last year, I played fifty eight. A little bit of a mm -hmm. bigger year last year, a little heavier year. 56 games? Did I? I got to check how many games I bought. Yeah. Well, I guess I bounce between like older games when I'm trying to like uh, 
capture footage or something. I don't know. Uh, a to for a total of 281 hours. That's not that much. Last year, I logged 439. Wow. You know what that is? That's less time on my Switch, more time on my Xbox doing some Warzone. That's what that is. There you go. There you go. So, so, and emulators. I've been, so I've been Activision. If you're watching, get your fucking shit together. Fire <laughs> Bobby Kodak and put Warzone on the Switch. Yeah, I've been uh, playing uh, uh, like N64 emulators on the PC and uh, mm -hmm. and ROM hacks for Super Nintendo on the PC and stuff. So uh, that probably took a lot of time away from my uh, from my actual Switch. A lot less yeah. Mario Maker. A lot more. Uh, fan-made Mario games. Mm. Anyway, ta-da, your most played games this year. Oh my god, I can explain. <laughs> the most played game is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild with 57 hours. I can explain. And I'm actually going to have a video all about this on Thursday. Oh boy. Uh, I did not play Zelda for 57 hours. I did not. You had it on for 57 hours. I had it hours. on for 57 hours right here. Not doing anything. Just on in this one position. And also, I had it on for longer than that. I just tried to turn the internet off and it didn't really work right. Um, so right now, this is a, this this is Breath of the Wild on my OLED Switch doing a little burn-in test. It has been on for uh, like somewhere around 1,800 hours. Uh, so like 1,800 hours, yeah. but, uh, it, this is a screenshot that's on my switch now because it ended up being a massive pain in the ass to have a game running on one switch and trying, trying to play a game on another. Right. So I ended up, I ended up just using a screenshot. Why did I do this? Why am I in discord? <laughs> Get me out of here. Um, so this is a lie. My most played game is not breath of the wild. Number two is Mario Maker 2. That's weird. Uh, so Mario Maker 2 is my actually most played game this year. Honestly, I thought I didn't really play Mario Maker that much this year. But I guess I did. I guess earlier in the year I was playing Ross's levels, maybe. Maybe. Uh, I still haven't finished those. I'm on World 8. But uh, I'm like halfway through World 8. I have to I have to finish that up. Uh, and the third, which is actually the second, is uh, Smash Ultimate with only 31 hours? Damn, I need to pick up the pace. Yeah. I need to play more Smash. Last year, I played Smash for 165 hours. Damn. Yeah. I need to uh, I need to play more Smash. I'd like to stream <laughs> that a little more. I got I got to grind quick play though. I got I want to get into Elite again. Yeah. I, whenever I stream Smash, I always do like open arenas, but I gotta I gotta play online more. Uh now let's slice that by months. Oh my god, what happened in October? Oh Metroid. Metroid <laughs> yeah. happened. And the OLED switch. Uh I had eighty two of my hours were in October. <laughs> and all the other months are like around twenty. August, I just gave up. Yeah, there are Again, again, not to spoil, but there were two months where I didn't play anything on Switch. August, what, what did I do in August? I don't know. Was that a busy month for you? Well, every month is a busy, busy month for you. What am I saying? You left me last August. <laughs> yes. <laughs> can I look at the, the stats for last August? I mean, you know what? We can see exactly what I did by going over to YouTube.com slash Wolfdead <laughs> and just going back to, to August. Yeah. Was that uh was that here? Money back guarantee. Shut up, Bob. What came out in August that you had to like This was July. Uh so a little bit ahead of this. I did took a take a week off in the beginning, maybe. Right. Nothing. Nothing came out. There was nothing. Hmm. Huh. I just I just friggin' gave up in August. <laughs> Weird. All right. When did you start Zelda? That I think uh, wait, yeah, when did I start Ocarina of Time? That might have been it. Mm. Uh well anyway. Any surprises here? Yeah, August. I had three hours. Also December yeah. only says three, but that can't be true. 
but I mean, it just started, so whatever. Um, next up, we got uh, your most active day was Saturday, October 2nd. Guess what I was playing? 21 hours of Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Which is inaccurate. It should this be a full be... 24, and it started a few days before that. <laughs> In 2020, your most you played most on Saturday, February 1st. I don't know what that was. Also, I've, earlier it's... earlier this year is when uh, Mario uh, 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 Bowser's Fury came out. I feel like I played a lot of that. Well, you, you prob- that probably was your most active day, but it's skewed because you, <laughs> you were trying to do your little Breath of the Wild experiment. Yes. Also, uh, I definitely spent a lot of hours in Bowser's Fury, and I feel like uh, I feel like that got lost because of my Breath of the Wild experiment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's something. So this isn't. This can't be that accurate. Your time a la modes. What does that mean? Oh, uh, a scoop of ice cream. Split between uh, how much you play docked and how much you play portable. 205 hours docked and 76 hours portable. See, there you go. The portable or the or the or the uh, handheld table or tabletop mode, that is wrong because it's the friggin' OLED experiment. Right. I don't actually play that. It would probably so t- the 205 hours is probably all of the time that I spent playing the Switch. Anything. Really, yeah. yeah. So the 76 hours is probably not not nothing. Uh, oh, wait, did I miss something? Uh, last year, you preferred to play in docked mode. Yeah, I still do. Nothing's changed there. As for your My Nintendo points, 1,791 gold points earned, 1,950 platinum points. Your current balance 198 gold 660 platinum so what's the platinum the platinum are the garbage points Uh, you use those towards like little trinkets and uh desktop wallpapers and crap over on the the nintendo like the my nintendo page or whatever interesting i've gotten i don't know if i still have them i got like you know oh oh why where do those go i haven't i haven't used them for anything i've got these That's two awesome. journals from it wait i need that i don't know if they're still available anymore but that looks awesome these are like because like otherwise you lose them you lose the platinum points and what sucks is they say they're free with the platinum points but you still have to pay the five bucks shipping i'm down for five bucks i just i start- am too uh, I am too, unless I'm trying to redeem my Lego Mario keychain. Oh yeah, it's not worth five bucks. <laughs> my uh, my my Japanese teacher threw kanji at me yesterday. Oh no! I was like, oh shit! I gotta do this now. I gotta write. So I gotta I gotta get a cool notebook. I have my I have that Animal Crossing one, but that's my little coffee journal. <laughs> so one of these is just a regular notebook, but this one is a three year journal or sorry it's a three-year uh calendar uh pl- planner it's planner. a three-year planner yeah let me see the inside that looks almost exactly like the animal crossing one never mind it is very clearly <laughs> mario themed all right next up what do we got here hope you had a blast bob thank you again for playing with us this year which nintendo switch game that you played was your favorite it was metroid dread thanks for mentioning it even (laughs) here's your chance to shout it out no shouting no actual shouting necessary don't tell me what to do nintendo um pick your favorite what oh it's a drop down list oh this is all of the games that i played yeah Wow, that's pretty awesome. Of all the Nintendo Switch games you played in 2021, whether it was long or short, sprawling or focused, new or old, which one did you like the most? Select your favorite game this year from the list, then download a fun image to share with the world. Uh, So the first one's 1980X. Uh, Did you play that this year? I did. I didn't play too much of it. 
Uh, how long is it? I think I only it's spent like, like a few hours in it, but I liked what I played. I mean, that's it's only like a few hours. It's not a very long game. Yeah, I feel like I might have gotten through like most of it. You you had a Twitter thread. I'm gonna pull that up uh, after you do yours. Yeah, I beat it, and it was not a long game at all. Okay, I, I'll finish it then because uh, it it's yeah. it was a fun little thing to jump into. The, the, the hardest that's... part is is the last level. Like, but even then. Like, once you figure it out, you can get through it pretty easily. The hardest part is the story. Like, the like the weird droning, like, narration that, like, is boring and, and stupid. <laughs> yeah. God, I have, like, <laughs> such... I have such feelings about that game. <laughs> Where's your threat? I, I thought I could find it quickly. How long uh, did you do that threat? Well, I did recently beat... I did recently beat Metroid Dread, so it should be... Oh, that's Barely. okay. I saw yeah. that. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. I have that primed and ready for later. Uh, so right. 1980X would not be my favorite. Apex Legends, Azure Strike, Gunfall, Blue Fire. Blue Fire sucked. I wanted Blue Fire to be really good, <laughs> but it wasn't good. Um, Body Quest? Oh, that was for Dan's video. Go check out our video over on that cyber channel. That was a fun video. Body Quest. Capcom, I could read all these for, for... Oh, Feathery Ears. That was another one for Dan's video. Uh, Jiffy, I think, is a bad platformer. That's like, that was like a really cheap uh, thing that I thought would be a fun platformer, but it's not. Mm -hmm. um, Knockout City was actually really fun. Uh, Mario Golf came out. Metroid Dread is probably my favorite. Monster Hunter Rise was also really good. I, I couldn't get too into it because I'm not that into... Uh, RPGs, but Monster Hunter Rise was uh, I think that has potential for Switch Game of the Year for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Do we, Payday 2? I played that this year. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond I was probably the most disappointed with. It like made me like realize I don't like a whole franchise of games. <laughs> <laughs> um, Is that because of the game or because you were playing with Wood and scootish. No, it's <laughs> no, it was uh, the game. Uh, it's the game's not okay. good. I, I realized that it uh, Pokemon is just mashing the A button for like the first few hours of the game. Yeah, and then you like get a team, and then you can like cultivate like a team of people and stuff. But like, then it's still just like a little modifier on mashing the A button. You know? Yeah, I feel like. Pokemon is the type of game that like is fun to play once every like ten years mm -hmm. because the the the, ver the variety between game somebody's gonna say there's a whole difference between every game but like for the casual player the variety from game to game just isn't isn't that great yeah uh like you you can get really nuanced with it but like uh, and a lot of people yeah. who like Pokemon they they make their own hard mode. Like they play Nuzlocks and stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't do that. And, and and I feel like the game would be better. It would make, it would suck me in a little more and it would make me want to not mash the A button so much if like mm -hmm. there was good dialogue and a good story. But like there yeah. isn't. <laughs> Nintendo it as a whole has weird UI issues and Pokemon uh, doesn't help that. Like, there's so much like stuff they could streamline in that game that they just don't that they just don't care to. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, uh, what else did I want to say? Super Meat Boy Forever. I played this year. I forgot about that. I spent a lot of hours in that. That I really liked a lot. They should port that to mobile though because it's only two buttons, and I feel like that'd be really good for yeah. that. Sky Children of Light is actually pretty good. I want to play more of that. That's a uh, free to play. Uh, game by that game company, uh, the same people oh, who made Journey yeah, yeah. and stuff, uh, and it works yeah. like you know how Journey has that weird always online mechanic. Sky yeah. Children of Light is basically just that always online mechanic, but a whole game built out of it. Okay. So that's, that's really good. Uh, anyway, yeah, the best game of the year uh, was uh, Metroid. Uh, ba Bowser's Fury is pretty close too, though. Bowser's Fury was pretty good. But yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, and also Nintendo 64 Switch Online, baby. I played a lot of Mario oh, yeah. uh, 
That's another thing. I've been I've been speed running or trying to learn how to speed run Mario sixty four. You didn't see that come up in this list. That's how little <laughs> I played Mario sixty four to prepare for my speed run competition. <laughs> By the way, um, I right, Metroid Dread. I'm I'm voting for Metroid Dread. All right. Don't forget these based on your play history. Here are a few games you've missed: Pokemon Shield. <laughs> because I played through all of Sword. Pokemon Let's yes. Go Eevee. Did they hear us shit talking Pokemon? Uh Axiom I Verge, think those I do are the have ones to play I that. have. Yeah, because they're the B-sides, Will. <laughs> yeah. Um and FIFA. Get the fuck out of here. They don't know anything about me. They got one game hey, right. <laughs> Is that it? On the horizon, there's lots to look forward to in 2022. Oh, this is cool. Here are some games. See, they don't know anything about me because they put Mario plus Rabbids. <laughs> but I will say I, I am excited are, for I Legends Arceus. the same for everyone. Oh, okay. the same for everyone. Yeah. I am excited for Pokemon Legends Arceus. I think that that would be a nice spin on, on the Pokemon franchise. Uh, Kirby mm -hmm. and the Forgotten Land, I think looks really cool. I'm down for Kirby, The Last of Us. And Splatoon yeah. 3, uh, hopefully they make a good single-player campaign because that's the only way I can see myself yeah. getting into Splatoon. Uh, and is that it? Uh, you got to download your wallpaper. For all time's sake, one last thing before you go. You can download a free wallpaper to reminisce about these Nintendo systems. Wow. That's yeah. so cool. They don't have a 4K option. Get out of here. Are you kidding me? You know Nintendo doesn't believe in 4K. How are you going to offer wallpapers in 2021 and the highest resolution is 1080p? Oh, wait, no, there is. There's. Okay, I'm sorry. 1536 by 2048. <laughs> Whatever that is. Uh, happy gaming. That okay. So I guess uh I guess can you share your screen? I guess it's your turn. Uh yeah, let me do here. Hopefully this doesn't wrap everything up. Share your screen. Uh I'm gonna do I'm gonna make a new overlay. Uh you gotta kidding me. I gotta go go to system preferences. Well, while you do that, I'm making an overlay and I will also uh shout out the people who gave us money. Uh, we got Beats Bleed. Thanks for the Prime Dark Type. Thanks for gifting five whole subs. I very much appreciate that. You are a great person. And Migs Luna, thank you for the 17 months. And Jamie Wentz, thank you for the six months. And Nadsgo, thank you for the Prime. And Sprozek, thank you for the 13 months. Got some Rise Pads. Thanks for the discount. No problem, dude. Thanks for supporting the people who support us. And Circa RVN, it's gonna thanks make for the four months. It's going to make me quit and reopen Discord. All right, do it. We don't need you. All right. <laughs> Goodbye, Will. Uh, boop. Bleep. Well, guys, it's talk, talk shit about Will time. Oh, shit, he's back. I don't know what his uh, icon is on Discord. It's him, like, all bloody. I was, uh, that was for a Halloween party. I went as Daredevil, and I went the extra mile, and I put uh, battle damage effects on there. Oh, wow. You're, you're, you're crazy. I, psychopath. You're cracked at, uh, at yeah. Halloween. I do love Halloween. It's a shame I married somebody who doesn't. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Go live. No, there should be okay. a share your screen option instead of go live. Oh no, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, f all right. Can you see it? <laughs> yes, it has worked. Okay, I'm looking at your Discord window right now. Okay. Uh, f not the. All right. You, you have to on. share your I whole screen. Up. Yeah, you shared just your Discord yeah. window. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll do this again. <laughs> This will be great content. That was a great experience. 
Discord makes me rate the experience, and I always uh, say it's, it's only giving me. Hold on a second. I can do this. I'm good. Okay. I'm good with computers. You only have to do 720p. We're not going. We're not going too crazy. Here. We're not MKBHD. All right. Did Bowser's Fury have local it's, multiplayer it's, or just 3D how do I land? It? it had because I have multiple all of it. screens on my Mac laptop, but it's only showing me either the laptop or my second monitor, not both at the same time. You don't want both at the same time. Does that make sense? You, can you even hear me right now? You can't hear me. You you fucked up royally. <laughs> uh. Does he not? Wait, does he think I'm just quiet? Does he think I'm just not going to talk? Here we go. When is he going to realize that he, that he can't hear me? All right. Yo, now will stream? It? LOL. Yeah, I can see it. Can you even hear Hello. me? <laughs> he can't hear me. Hello, anybody. We can hear you, Will. You got to fix your shit on your end. Anyone at all. <laughs> Did you lose me? Yes, we lost you. Bob. Yes, you are. You have been lost. Robert. Do I, should I call him like on the phone? Like how? Like, why does he realize? I'm, call, I'm calling Will. I have to I have to mute him here now. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. When are you when were you gonna realize that we we that you can't hear me? That's what I was Did you just think I was out. just quiet? Did you think I was just quiet that whole time? Yeah. I was just I was just there and then I realized you couldn't hear me. Longest pregnant pause in the world. <laughs> oh wait, this happens on Mac, I think. This is a Mac issue. Ah. I think when you share like your screen it mutes. I think I've, I think I remember this happening once. Uh just restart Discord and don't share the screen. Okay. All right, goodbye. Why am I saying goodbye? I'm gonna hear. I'm gonna to talk to him in two seconds. Maybe I could log in as him. No, it's not worth it. I'll just make him speak everything to us. Mac sucks. Confirmed. Mac is horrible for streaming. This is why I. This is why I will throw in the extra money to have a Mac for editing and work stuff and then a PC for streaming. Otherwise I just suck it up and stream from, I, I would, I would just stream from Mac, but it's just so bad streaming from a Mac. There's so many problems. Oh, I forgot. I had half a muted. I forgot on top of that. I had you muted also. Great. <laughs> There's gotta be a way to like share audio it breaks that it breaks things on i forgot i've had this happen to me before i shared my screen on mac and it just breaks things yeah so just don't share just tell us uh, just plow through your year in review okay. and just tell us what happened i will plow through everything all right uh please keep in mind that i do not play anywhere near as much as bob does i have a child and a full-time job <laughs> and a mortgage um, I played 18 games this year as compared to the 20 I played last year. Seems like a lot. I don't remember playing uh, these many games. Uh, I've played for a total of 52 hours, which was the same that I played last year. That was the exact same. Wow. The exact same 52 hours. Uh, my most played games, uh, 20 hours in Metroid Dread, of course. 16 hours in a Super Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo Switch Online. <laughs> and 6 hours in Katana Zero. Did Last you play year any, it was... Did you play any uh, uh, N64? 
Yeah, I like played like a little bit of like Sin and Punishment and Win Back here and there. I guess not enough to put on this list. I gotta play uh, Sin, uh, uh, Win Back. I want to play Win Back. Yeah, I'm hoping now that I have a pro controller, I can at least, you know, have a better feel for the games. Because playing on the Joy Cons really isn't optimal. I mean, if I had the stupid N64 controller, that would be ideal. But I, I tried, I I tried playing uh, Mario 64 with Joy Con. Man, it is not, it's like impossible. I it's know. so bad. It's you know, finally took me what four years to realize the Joy Cons are crap. I actually prefer the Pro Controller to the N64 controller. Like 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 really? the N sixty four switch online controller, I actually preferred using yeah. the the pro controller over that because the pro control uh, uh, the N sixty four controller the thumbstick is too sensitive, right? Which is like the opposite of what our childhood N sixty four controller's thumbstick was. That was like yeah, not sensitive at all. Yeah. Uh, f- all right. So by month, my most uh, I played the most in October nineteen hours Metroid. Uh, and then in August, I played 16 hours. That was probably Super Metroid. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, May and June, I didn't play at all. And according to this, December, I played zero hours, but I beat Dread in December. So there should be something on there. Yeah, this thing, something's up with, with, with this. It's not exactly accurate. It takes like, I a, think they it's just like a random stopped, guess. I think they just stopped... Uh, you know, counting anything after what was it, December twelfth? They said, right. So, like, if you played like you know twenty minutes in a game, they're not counting anything else. Uh, my most active day was Sunday, August twenty second, where I played four hours of Super Nintendo Entertainment System Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, last year was April eighteenth. I don't remember what came out in April that I played that much. Yeah. Uh, I, pl- I played two hours in docked mode and 50 hours in handheld mode. Damn. I am I am primarily a handheld player because it's just so convenient. Uh, I can tell you the two hours were to beat Dread and uh, at my friend's bachelor party when we played... Uh, what did we play? We played Tony Hawk and Mario Kart on that. You, you have a, a satisfied grip, right? Yes. Okay. Make the satisfy grip helps a lot. Mm-hmm. Go to satisfy.com slash wolfden and use the promo code wolfden to get whatever off and buy yourself one. 5% off. There you go. Uh, f- I earned 583 gold points and 2,820 platinum points. So oh. fantastic. Uh, hope you had a blast. I hit the button for next. Come on. We got a show to do. Pick your favorite game on this list. That includes 1980X, Cyber Shadow, Katana Zero, Mario Kart 8, Metroid Dread, Mom Hid My Game, Mortal Kombat 11, <laughs> uh, N64, uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, uh, Resident Evil 4, Scott Pilgrim, Sega Genesis Classics, Sega Genesis, Nintendo Switch Online, Sonic Mania, Mario 35, Super Nintendo, Smash Brothers, and Tony Hawk. How much Mom Hid My Game did you play? That's also a very short game. So I played I a little bit of that, it. Probably like uh, a couple hours. Okay. Game is so good. <laughs> it is good? That is a very good game, yes. Wow, I gotta, I gotta play more of it. I don't yeah. think I got far enough uh, to where like the weird shit happened. Oh, it gets very weird. Uh, don't forget these based on your play history. Here are a few games you might have missed. Uh, the Elder Scrolls V, Dark Souls, KOTOR, and L.A. Noir. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I, you know, I played L.A. Noir. Uh, I really don't feel like being that late to Skyrim or Dark Souls. One of these days I will play KOTOR and not hate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, on the horizon, Pokemon Legends, Mario and Rabbids, Splatoon 3, and oh, Kirby. So that is just the same, yeah. Yeah, same games. And uh, here's a wallpaper of all of our consoles. 
or a low resolution wallpaper. Yeah. So, uh, Will also made a Twitter thread over on twitter.com yeah. slash Will Wolf, damn it. Uh, mm-hmm. and these are the games you played this year. Uh, these are the games that I've beaten this year oh, specifically. You, yeah. That's w- why I thought you played more than me because, uh, you beat a lot of games this year. I, when I play a game, I, I do try to at least story complete it. Mm. Of, I mean, if your game sucks, I will stop playing it. Um, except for Avengers, I'm like now committed to like just getting through that game. But <laughs> uh, I do like to story complete a game at the very least. Um, so yeah, these are the games that I've committed to story completing for one so, reason or another. So you got Tomb Raider, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, yes. You got 1980. So these aren't just Switch games, by the way. No, uh, it's it's a mix of everything. 1980X, which we talked about. Mom Hid My Game, which yeah. we talked about. Uh, if you liked Mom Hid My Game, you should check out Kukiomi Considerate. It's kind of okay. like a WarioWare slash Mom Hid My Game. It's only five bucks. I played it with mm-hmm. uh, with Dan, and it was fucking awesome. Um, I'll give that a try. So what else? Um Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. Care to, care to explain yeah. yourself? <laughs> you beat it? I mean, I beat it. It wasn't easy. I did have to use the invincibility cheat, oh. but I beat it. I wanted, no, I wanted to play it and I wanted to beat it because I'm on like a quest to try and figure out what makes the perfect Indiana Jones game. Okay. And I feel like there are a lot of elements in this that can make for if not a maybe not a if not the perfect Indiana Jones game then definitely a good one. The problem is it came out in 2003, so there's a lot of like jank in it. This and... sounds like a great uh video essay topic. <laughs> I I need to find more Indiana Jones games to like play and really put time into. I was at the Festival of Games uh, sponsored by Long Island Retro Gaming Expo over the mm-hmm. weekend. And I was actually looking for Indiana Jones's Greatest Adventures on Super Nintendo because that's apparently like the best Indiana Jones game. Mm-hmm. Um, and could not find it. Could not find a lot of games that I was that I could actually afford that I wanted to get. <laughs> we should. But that's do, a whole other story. We should have a sub goal or a crowdfunding goal of some kind where uh, we will hire an editor. Will does a video essay. And then you just <laughs> write it and record it and then just give it, we'll give it to somebody and pay them to just fucking make a video out of it. I, you know, I could get behind that. <laughs> um. Anyway, what else do we have? Uh, uh, Hitman well, 2. Hitman I, 2. I still that never game, played a Hitman game. That game is fucking great. Uh, I'm hoping that I can finish... Uh, Avengers now so I can dive into Hitman 3 uh, because Hitman is so good Uh, this game it was very good it has one of the coolest levels in the whole series where it's just the suburbs and you just walk around the suburban town uh, trying to pick off your targets it's it's fantastic I can't recommend this series enough Uh, I need to hear about Katana Zero what's there to say it was incredible (laughs) I know, but you play, uh, that came out like two years ago. <laughs> I know, and like it came out two years ago, and you you kept typing it up, and I knew it was a game I could get into, and but I, what I wasn't expecting was like the state of Zen, like you get into by like completing a trying to complete a run. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's fantastic. That's why it's it's hard to watch Katana Zero because it looks like somebody's just playing the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, and it looks frustrating, but I love that stuff. I I, I love yeah. uh, it, it reminds me of like doing speed runs or like really hard levels in Mario, uh, or like Mario Maker. Like you wanna See, you wanna you know get it perfect and get it right, and and, and it's kind of monotonous, but it feels really yeah. good when you finally get it. See, my problem is I generally don't like that. I don't mm-hmm. like having to play things over and over again because I feel like it's the game's way of punishing you for through no fault of your own but katana zero i like because everything in the like 
you know you can beat the level. Everything's laid out for you, and nothing's too difficult. The problem is you you're the problem you slip up <laughs> you get overconfident you don't see the one guy that's behind the door so it's all about learning from your mistakes and perfecting the run and i and i think that is why i stuck with it through to the end in addition to the fact that i think the story is actually very interesting and yeah, very the well it's pretty cool very well melded with the the gameplay that's actually one of my big hangups with 1980x I think the concept is fantastic, but it didn't explore it enough within the realms of the story and the gameplay meshing together. It kind of just ended after the the final game, so to speak. Yeah, 1980X, it felt like the story got in the way or it was like a, it was like everything stops and then the story happens and you're like, oh, I got to listen to this guy until I get to play next. Um, and Katana Zero... Uh, it, I like kind of wanted to know what was happening. I was like, oh, I, yeah. I, I, I want, I want more of the story. Um, 1980X is like a, is like a, 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 it's just a bunch of different styles of games thrown into one. You're, so you're playing like a, like a retro racing game. You're playing like a, yeah. a like a, a, you know, a, a Shinobi type game. Then you're playing like playing a, like a brawler, like a play yeah. a dungeon crawler, yeah. And I feel like. I feel like there's a, like, that game is, like, what that game wants to be is still feasible, but 1980X, as it stands, is more of, like, a proof of concept or a tech demo than an actual full game. Yeah. No, you're you're right. Uh, Somebody in the chat, yeah, Pan Rizzo says, Will must love Celeste then, because Celeste is a lot of playing the level over and over again until you finally get it right. Uh, yeah, and, and it's broken up in chunks. So there's like a just like in Katana Zero, there will be a screen. You have to get through the screen. Yeah. Um, have you played Celeste? I haven't played a lot of it. I so I guess go you didn't back love and it. try that again. Yeah. I, I, why didn't I play a lot of it? I don't remember. Maybe you got frustrated because of the type of game that it was. Maybe. I mean, I, the same logic that for why I like Katana Zero can also be applied to the Messenger. I really like the messenger for the same reasons. Like screwing up is straight up my fault and I have to, you know, learn from my mistakes and try again. But there was a point where it was too hard and I just stopped playing and went on to play something else. And that's a will problem for sure. (laughs) But now I'm so far away from the messenger that if I picked it up, I'm not going to know what the fuck I'm doing. So I guess I'll just never beat the messenger. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, then we have Doom Eternal, which I thought you beat that already. Good. I beat Doom, the original Doom. Uh, <laughs> Doom, did, well, 2016. Did Doom Eternal come out this year? Yes. Uh, no, know. last year. Yeah, that's what I mean. I thought you I thought you yeah. beat that already. No, I didn't get to play it until June. So. Oh, wow. Uh, then we have Resident Evil 7. I finally got to play it. I need to beat that. And I wish I played it earlier. This game is great. Uh, kind of makes me scared for to play eight because this was so different, but so like tightly well done that the idea of eight expanding it and being more action focused, I think, while still keeping like the style of seven, kind of feels like the wrong way to go. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Interesting. Yeah. Also, Sonic Generations, you beat that this year. What the hell, dude? So I was well. I've beaten Sonic Generations like a hundred times. The reason oh, okay. why I beat Just it this sure. year, I was playing it in between my play sessions of uh, Resident Evil Seven to calm myself down. <laughs> because Resident Evil Seven <laughs> is a chaser. I did because, like, dude, Resident Evil Seven is fucking terrifying, and it's like so tense and like all it does is great on your nerves even when it's not like outright scary you play the whole game like this because you don't know what the hell is going to happen you know some people are really good at playing a game like in between like a uh, video edit or while they're working on something they can like pick up a game and like like in the middle of it i need yeah. to start doing that instead of like watching a youtube video i could just yeah play yeah. like a game of quick play smash and then while i'm waiting for another round i could like be editing you know i will say that i generally don't like playing more than one game at a time 
Like I never understood people who are like, oh yeah, I'm playing uh I'm playing this and I'm playing that and I'm playing like six games at once. I like to play one game at a time because yeah, I've had way. I've had times where I try that and I'll think I'm playing the other game and I'll get the button combinations wrong and whatnot. But Sonic Generations was like that's a game A, that's a game I played before, and B, that's a much simpler game than uh Resident Evil Seven, so there wasn't really any confusion there. I have to call this out. Eric Henley in the chat said, never beat the messenger. They are very underpaid and don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was Fair good. enough. That was good. All right. We know Will played Super Metroid. We talked about that yes. a lot the other day. Very uh, good. Sonic Colors Ultimate. Apparently you beat also that. Very good. Oh, also you played on very PS4. Good. Yes. And we have a whole podcast about Metroid Dread. So yeah, that's the rest of his list. So uh, do your own year in review. What is the website? It is Nintendo. It, oh, I'm so, oh, hold on a second. I'm going to paste uh, it in the chat. It is yeah. switch.nintendo.com slash year dash in dash review. Switch Nintendo year in review. Go uh, do it. Go do it, guys. Also, guys, if you're here and you're listening to us live right now, oh, and, and we're in a tab, click in on this tab, look me in the eyes right now because I want to play an ad and I want the views for it, okay? Also, oh, there is a pause button. I can pause the recording. Ooh. Everybody look me in the face right now because we, don't look at me. We want, we want Bezos to give me money for doing this podcast, okay? And while you do that, I'm going to read some notifications. Oh, Pantix, thank you so much for the Prime subscription. Uh, that's really all that happened. Uh, all right. Uh, we're going to play an ad, and if you're here on stream, uh, you get to experience it with us. And if you're not, you're not yeah. going to see the ad. So uh, I guess uh, see you in two seconds, uh, podcast listeners. Wow, that was crazy. That was such a cool ad. Well, too bad you weren't here to see it live. Wow. Um, anyway, next news. What do we have? We have uh, major game announcements. Yeah. Uh, we doing Banjo? No, I moved it to do Game Award announcements first. Okay. Okay. I, I might have missed that. All right. Yeah, the Game Award announcements. There were, they announced a lot of games. <laughs> They sure did, some Will. The, I was watching this live, been... and Will was watching it live with me. And uh, we were I both also... like, damn, this ain't too good. <laughs> some, of, some of the announcements were kind of cool. Some of them were just eh. Um, I mean, here they had the first. It's Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Um, this is notable because it's actual gameplay footage. It's not a cutscene. It's not a cinematic or anything like that. And it looks fine it looks chaotic it looks uh very different from rocksteady's previous dc games i was going to play also... the trailer but i'm remembering that tr sometimes game trailers get uh c and d so yeah not happening although didn't they make a point to say that like all the trailers uh for the game awards had license free music so you I... could yes but still uh, that's the thing though All, when we're on this podcast we never play the audio from the trailers and we still get dinged mm. so I I, I just uh, I would just what's even the point like why even do it anymore good point I mean I guess I can uh, like, I can show stills there you go yeah. wow well I was gonna say was overall this game has given me very big Sunset Overdrive vibes I did not like Sunset Overdrive all that much. What? I feel like you would. I thought I would too, but I didn't like... It's one of those games where uh, the weapons suck. Like, all the weapons <laughs> suck, and you have to find, like, the one weapon that you actually like using, and you wind up using that the whole game, and that can get very boring very fast. Um, and it relies so much on, like, the traversal mechanic... And and a tower defense mini game that they keep making you do oh, every like no, I get two those hours adding my games. So yeah, I could not I could not get behind that. But it led to Spider Man, so at least it was good for something. Sunset Overdrive did. 
Yeah, because it's the same engine as Spider-Man. Oh, very nice. I think more importantly, we got Star Wars Eclipse. <laughs> so, I so you know in the beginning where they got those guys drumming? Mm-hmm. I legit thought that was an actual human being for a minute. Yeah, it was really good looking. The way like the his muscles moved and stuff, like that's very hard to do, like that specific kind of animation. So I I legit thought it was a live action trailer. I um, this did not look like Star Wars at all for a really long no. time. It took no, a really long time until I saw a lightsaber. Then I was like, oh, or maybe the council seat. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think that's cool because it's going into like the weird culty aspect of Star Wars that you really only ever saw in like the old expanded universe books. <laughs> it's and now the, they're uh, putting it in a video game. It's the High Order era, I think. High, Re- High Republic. High so it's Republic. Like two hundred years before the prequels. But I mean, Yoda's there. Well, Old yeah, a- Yoda. Yoda's like 900 years old. So. Yeah, he's probably like at the at the at the ripe young age of like 600 in this. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty, but like who knows what the hell this game is? All we know is that it's made yeah. by Quantic Dream, Quantic Dream. Dream. So like we yeah. like can maybe so it guess. probably it probably won't be an action game. It'll probably be like a very story focused cinematic type game with a lot of quick time yeah. events. So that explains why it's uh, it, it was very cinematic. That explains why it was yeah. very pretty looking. Yeah. Uh, then we have uh, this one. Uh, absolutely shocked. Wonder Woman. <laughs> yes. Very cool. Um, it's coming from the guy from Monolith who made Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War. And they're going to use the nemesis system from those games in this game which is fantastic i don't understand why more games don't use that system because they patented it (laughs) i know they patented it but like warner brothers owns monolith they could license it out to all the other games that they make you are not wrong or or like create a, a knockoff version of it for god's sake nintendo patented the sanity effects in uh, Eternal Darkness, and a lot of games have insanity effects. Find ways around it, game industry. Crazy. But, so yes, we're getting a Wonder Woman game. Wonder Woman is one of my favorite characters. Putting fanboyism aside for a minute, it's always cool when a superhero who isn't Batman or Spider-Man gets a solo video game because superheroes are perfect fit for video games because their powers and abilities offer great unique gameplay mechanics and features and traversal uh ideas and even story based elements it it perfectly fits the world of video games and a character like wonder woman in a solo game has a lot of unique abilities and powers that could fit in open world style game that's different from everyone else her lasso can open up a whole suite of gameplay mechanics her bracelets her tiara um her fucking invisible jet even (laughs) so i i think like this this is definitely a good thing for superhero video games in general it's a good thing for wonder woman fans in general i've this is good i i hope hopefully this game will be successful so that more superheroes get their own solo games maybe we'll get a good green lantern game maybe we'll get you know a flash game that's just the best sonic the hedgehog game in years who knows i i i'm down for for a a a different type of superhero game uh i I, i'm i'm glad warner brothers is making another like dc game uh i'm also glad this wasn't leaked like like everybody's speculating what type of uh you know superhero game they're gonna make after they made all of the arkham games uh and we've heard superman we've heard uh uh the flash was one that they that they were speculated to be yeah. working on uh i think suicide squad even leaked before that came out so i'm glad that um i'm glad that this was like under wraps for so long 
because this was yeah. kind of a shock. Um, anyway, that was one of the things where I was like, Will's going to be happy. The next one? Yes. <laughs> Alan Wake 2. It was, it, was a good, it was a good day for Will games, let me tell you. <laughs> so Alan Wake 2 is interesting because Remedy has said, they've gone on record and said, like, Alan Wake 1 was profitable for us, but it was not profitable immediately. Mm -hmm. So we had to move on to other things. We're not going to make Alan Wake games for the time being. So that's why they made Quantum Break and then Control. And now we're getting Alan Wake 2 out of nowhere. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, I mean, Alan Wake had a huge cult following after the fact. Yeah. And people always talk yeah. about Alan Wake. I remember it wasn't very popular when it came out. Uh, I thought this was Jake Gyllenhaal. I thought Jake Gyllenhaal <laughs> was straight up in the game. It, uh, I know Alan Wake is like his face is actually based on like a like an actual model. And I think they got the same guy and they just like now he's in 4K. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, I don't know. I didn't really play much of the first Alan Wake, but it's a highly recommended. It is, uh, backwards compatible on Xbox One and Series X and S, so. Wow. Yeah. Uh, uh according to this, it's going to be more of a survival horror game than the first one was. So that'll be interesting. The first one was a horror game, but it was, was also, like, primarily an action game. It was very action heavy. I just want to know what happened to his wife because the game ends on a cliffhanger and doesn't explain anything to you. Well, maybe this one, maybe that's what we've been waiting for for freaking 10 years. Yeah. Uh, next is for spoken. This is the uh, PlayStation exclusive, another PlayStation five exclusive. Finally. Yes. Uh, this is the one with the woman who has a, uh, an, uh, an arm that talks to her or something. Yeah, and she talks back all sassy like. <laughs> yeah, I did not like that first trailer where she her dialogue just sounded like she was like a like a like a like a teenage just just angsty like like yeah, just it was weird dialogue. This actually yeah. I liked a lot more. This sounded a lot more natural. Yeah. Um, and then you have like weird wacky characters. They said that part of this takes place in New York City, but it doesn't look like it. Um, yeah. And lots of particle effects. That's the, well, the yeah. theme of this generation is particle effects. Well, yeah, man. How else are you going to show us next generation? You got to show the particle effects. They're going to friggin' just, they're going to crush bit rates doing that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like particle effects are not always going to look good. Yeah. Uh, it's the game looks beautiful, but now that I'm looking at screenshots. Like as I'm f just thumbing through the YouTube video, they look, it looks bad, but, but like in motion, I swear it looks really pretty and nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, the other trailer had me a little more interested, even though I just shit on the dialogue. Uh, it had like more platforming stuff that I was kind of interested in. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I don't know how this game is going to be. I mean, I'm sure as a game, it'll be fine, but I still have that fear that like the witty banter is going to be grating real fast. Yeah, I mean, again, this one seemed better. It's it's this this trailer yeah. seemed like it had better uh, dialogue. Mm -hmm. What's this Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I didn't even remember this. So, I think this was in the pre-show. Oh, if you're able to in the pre-show, so this is basically this is from the creators of the Friday the Thirteenth game. So this is basically the same game, but because the Friday the Thirteenth license is like caught up in legal hell right now. They they're making Texas Chainsaw Massacre instead. Okay, weird. Uh, I should clarify that there are plenty of differences between Texas Chainsaw and Friday the Thirteenth. There can be a whole different suite of gameplay options. It can change up the game for the better. But let's be real here: they're both about a deranged man in a mask killing teenagers in mm -hmm. a remote location. So mm -hmm. there's gonna be a lot of similarities too. We also got Hellblade 2, which we knew about, right? Yes. Uh, this time they showed off like a six-minute cinematic uh, trailer. Oh, wow. I mean, it look, it looks fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't play the first one, although I really wanted to. Uh, yeah, I don't... I feel like... I feel like this is definitely a game that we have, we have to wait and see when it comes out. Because I think the first game was 
relatively short gameplay wise. So also too, the first one was made by Ninja Theory by themselves, and now they're owned by Microsoft. Oh yeah. So it'd be yeah. interesting to see what that Microsoft money can do for do for them. Next up is Halo the TV show. I oh, think, finally! I think this actually looks sick. This doesn't look bad. It looks this, like freaking... The suit looks it, very good. It looks like uh, 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 The Mandalorian. It looks like... God, this is going to sound like I'm insulting it. It looks like a cheaper <laughs> Mandalorian, but uh-huh. still... It still has a good enough budget to get like good suits. <laughs> I was surprised by some of the scenes, you know, like like yeah, no, like a look, lot of the CG it, looks pretty good. I look, it does look impressive. I'm not I'm not trying to knock it. Like the Mandalorian has that Disney money behind it. Right. So like they could just throw money at it and it can look just as good as the movies do. This does not <laughs> this does not have that Disney money. So it it's not going to look at the same caliber, but for the caliber it it is at, it looks very impressive. Again, the suit looks very good. That's the that's the one thing they have to get right and it's the easiest thing to screw up and they didn't screw that up. Speaking of screw up, uh, I realized before I did the bounty wrong. We were supposed to hit a button that I didn't hit, so the whole thing's washed. It didn't work. <laughs> Uh, and now we lost viewers i don't know if i can play it again but well well maybe later sorry guys for for watching amazon prime video uh nobody benefited from that (laughs) uh anyway uh here's elden ring oh yay so i understand people are excited about this but uh it all it looks like to me is dark souls but with a warm filter on it instead of a cool filter. That's what it looks like. All the all the Soulsborne games look the same to me. Yes. The only thing the that only, was different was thing, you, there's, this one has Bulbasaur. The only thing that was that I can differentiate, I can tell Bloodborne because your player character wears a hat. <laughs> That's yes. it. Yes. Bloodborne is significantly different because there is a hat. And now Elden Ring there's is different hat. because it's uh it's warm instead of cool. It's got it's got like red yeah. colors. That's that George R. R. Martin influence right there, I guess. Yeah, yeah, like that's like the big deal with Elden Ring is it's got George George Railroad Martin. Yeah. Like he wrote something about it. I don't know. Well, yeah, instead of finishing the Game of Thrones books, he's off making video games. People are excited about it. Whatever, man. Have a good time. Yeah, uh, sure, it's, sure. It's fine. I'm so stoked for Sonic Frontiers. Yeah, we got a lot more to say about Sonic Frontiers. So Sonic Frontiers, this it's Sonic Breath of the Wild, baby. Look, it looks yeah. pretty good. I know it's not going to be, though. Oh, God. It I, looks good. I just, like, I, like, I, if I saw this before Sonic 06, I would be like, yo, this looks incredible. Uh... But I know better now. I'm, I'm, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, that's all. That's all you can do. Because I'm not, I'm not opposed. In principle, I'm not opposed in principle to a open world Sonic game. My past experiences with Sonic 3D Sonic is that he works best when he's just on a track going forward. Mm-hmm. That's it. Like any time you have to like explore wide open space. Like the hub worlds in Sonic Adventure or uh, Sonic Unleashed doesn't work right. Um, also, too, like whenever Sega does big swings for the fences like this uh, with Sonic, it's 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 embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work out. That being said, that being said, so you know how like every time somebody does a fan trail uh, a fan sonic game a 3d fan sonic game and twitter is all like hire this man sega yeah after this trailer came out people everybody was like they did it they hired that man (laughs) because no joke this trend if this is really gonna be an open world sonic game like there have been fan games trying to do that style for years now i forgot what the 
the the big one is. But it looks like they're finally going in that direction. Yeah, it, and, it legit looks like they made this in Unreal Engine, like everybody has been saying yeah. for years. <laughs> yeah. Well, not not just that. What Sonic Utopia. The... That's it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Last Colossi said it. Yeah. So I guess they're finally they're they're finally gonna go in that direction, which I never thought could work, like properly. But I guess they they must have found a way to make it work. So I I don't know like uh the ga- the people who work on the main sonic games they seem to like rush them out lately and like just, just don't give a shit so like i'm really hoping they they're fixing that you know like yeah there's a lot of potential for them to have these to have this grand ambition right in the beginning and then we see like actual gameplay and we're like oh this is just a regular sonic game <laughs> there's got to be there has to come a point i think they realize that they've been screwing up because when did Sonic Forces come out? I don't remember. A while ago. It must we have haven't been got like, it must have been 2019. Yeah, because like the most we've gotten since then was a port of Sonic Colors. Because last generation, like they like Sonic Unleashed came out. Oh, you didn't like that? Here's Sonic Colors. Oh, that did good. Here's Sonic Generation. Like they keep putting out Sonic games. Mm-hmm. This generation, like we only really got Sonic Forces and Sonic Media. That was it. So I think they're finally understanding that they can't just fart these games out. Right. They need to like stop, pull back, and take their time with them. Right. That's the only thing. That's the only thing I can think of, and that's basically just me hoping to all hell that they're learning their lessons. I know, uh, but the problem is they're gonna make money whenever they release a Sonic game, no matter what. So th- that that's that's why they just kind of don't really care. They're 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 like, this is how much work we need to put in the game in order to make X amount of dollars. So we're just gonna do that. <laughs> I know. I think on some level they do have to care because after a while it just becomes in like they know the reputation is tanking. Right. Like, and that you can't sustain that for very long. Right. Especially with a a character the legacy like sonic that sega is aware of that legacy also it's it's like you know like you need new fans like it's been like 10 years yeah since a good one yeah no i know yeah like we need we need new fans to get into sonic and it's just not going to happen if they keep releasing trash hi aj aj's rating us hello everybody welcome to the podcast uh Anyway, we were just talking about uh, the the new awesome Sonic game that's, that AJ says is definitely going to be really good. That's what he said. Yes. Uh, Dragon Armor says that Sonic Forces came out in November 2017. Really? So, yeah, it's... Yeah, that makes sense. Because what was it, Sonic's 25th anniversary was the 16th, the 2016, and that's when Mania came out? Tw- no, no, Sonic Mania, Mania came, came out for the Switch. Mania came out in... Yeah, in, in 7, 2017. Never mind. Um, interesting. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and this game's coming, coming out, out in 2022. So. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm excited for it. I hope it could be good, but I have little yeah. faith. Uh, and I know, don't play it on the Switch, because apparently they don't know how to program Switch games. Oh, I will be, and I will be mad about it. Um, I don't want to talk about everything that everything else that came out because there's so much more uh for the game awards yeah slitterhead looked weird i hate that name yeah that that Uh, definitely sounds like a slur the lord of the rings Gollum. Gollum looks uh weird in this like he looks like he's i don't get uh, this this is definitely not based on the movies okay i think warner brothers has the license to make movie based games but they also can't call them lord of the rings that's why they're called middle earth um what yeah so i think this is a license and not be able to call it lord of the rings i i don't know if there's something weird with like the rights to between warner brothers and the tolkien estate um so they had to call it middle earth but this might be based on the books if they can call it lord of the rings so who made this who's making this uh D Delic Entertainment and Nacon. Who's publishing it? One of those. Uh, whatever. Uh, this looks weird. We don't even know what type of game it is. Yeah. 
And it's the story of Gollum. Everybody needed to know his origin story. Yeah, that they tell you in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Among Us is coming to VR. Hooray! This time, actually, I think this is a great idea because there's so many VR knockoffs of Among Us. It yeah. was probably a really good idea to put a lot of that extra money and resources that they had into a VR version. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, just get the real deal. Uh, it'd be cool if you could play that with... Uh, no, that wouldn't make any sense. If you could play that with other people who are playing the regular 2D version. Yeah. Uh, Star Trek Resurgence. Hello. This is a uh, third-person choice-driven game from Dramatic Labs, a studio made up of Telltale veterans. So oh, if yeah. you missed the Telltale games, there you go. This looks like shit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Arc Raiders. Uh, this was like the big, like... They made like a big deal about this reveal, I think, because it's a next gen title. Yeah, but like it doesn't it, like it just looks like a freaking like a shooter, like a third person. Well, because also it's from former Dice and Battlefield developers. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, like yeah, it just looks like every other multiplayer shooter. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It just looks like a... I mean, it's pretty, and I like the art style, but, like... Yeah. I've seen this a million times over. Um, what else do we have? Matrix Resurrections came with a friggin' two-minute game that dropped? Yeah. Uh, did you play the game? No. Because I watched clips from it, and it does look very impressive. Yes. It looks real pretty. Yeah. And they uh, showed a clip from the movie, which looks very good. I can't wait for that movie to come out. This game, Tunic. Uh, it's a isometric Zelda. Ooh. Super cute Zelda-like. Uh, Homeworld 3? I don't know anything about Homeworld. Uh, Crossfire X. I've I remember that when the first trailer dropped, it had a trailer core cover of X going to give it to you, and I was like, <laughs> I'm out. Oh, this just looks like freaking like Ghost Recon or something. No, I, yeah. I don't need that. Nightingale looked weird. This is a weird, uh, this yeah, is a, this is a freaking weird, weird art game. style. Yeah. Uh, some people are into that, uh, that weird yeah. Victorian future era. Yeah. Battlegrounds had a trailer. And people are still playing that. Apparently, oh, it's uh, now it's free to play. What that is was the Battlefield? I mean, uh, no PUBG, PUBG Battlegrounds. Yeah, who I, I yeah. didn't even I didn't even think about that. Um, Cuphead. Speaking of games, I bought an Xbox specifically <laughs> for. Cuphead's getting its last DLC with a uh, freaking uh, uh, an extra character the, the, for some reason. Yeah. Uh, and cool. then we, and then is that really it? Oh, Dune Spice Wars. Oh yeah, <laughs> they should have just said fuck it and called it Dune Three. Yeah, that would have been awesome. But anyway, yeah, Dune surprisingly has like a really, uh, uh, it's like a really big deal in the in the RTS like community. Yeah, I think genre. I mentioned this on the show a while ago. Like you Dune did. Two is credited as being like the setting the standard for all future rts games like outside of uh af like after it <laughs> that's why i said they should have freaking just straight up called it dune 3 they probably can't because like i think dune 2 was made by a company that got bought by ea and then ea closed it <laughs> and then finally i want to talk about uh the sonic trailer yes sonic 2 uh, and, and yo this looked awesome this should have been the first movie. <laughs> I know. When the when we saw the first movie, I was like, that was all right. The second one's gonna be great. Yeah. Like they said they set up for a sequel really well. Yeah. And and I didn't even I mean I didn't I haven't said this about anything. I didn't I didn't watch any of this original Sonic stuff and go, this looks awesome. This <laughs> watching this trailer, this looked fucking awesome. Yeah. Robotnik yeah, looks I, I awesome. Think Knuckles looks Robotnik awesome. Looks yeah. Tails looks awesome. They all sound awesome. Ta I mean, Tails is the original voice actress, so mm -hmm. she sounds great. 
Idris as Knuckles is like chef's kiss. Couldn't <laughs> ask for better better Knuckles. Uh, I I am curious how much like James Marston's character is gonna like factor into this because like it looks like don't not need much. him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that'll be nice. I I am. I don't understand why Sonic and Tails have to go visit the biker bar from the first movie. Um, but I'm willing to forgive a lot because this movie does look like it's trying to do something different from the first movie. Yeah, I mean, hopefully they don't just recreate the first movie. Hopefully they don't do like yeah. a Back to the Future or something. But uh, Well, uh, yeah. Well, I just, you know, do the first movie again. But this time... Sonic is James Marston's character and Tails takes over like the Sonic fish out of water character. I'm excited for the whole Knuckles arc of him being fooled by Robotnik and then yeah. him fighting Sonic and then realizing that their enemy is the same and then them going after uh, Eggman. I think I, I'm I, I'm I'm stoked to see all of that play out in live action. Yes. And then to see where it goes from there, and then to see like what 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 ha cliffhanger we're gonna leave off on for the third one. Yeah. Also, the movie should have had and knuckles in it. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog two yes. and knuckles. And they should, and yeah knuckles. they they could have gone with that. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, yeah, I think that that was the best announcement the whole of the whole freaking show. Yeah. Otherwise, I think a very lackluster. Uh, usually, there's some big game announcements for the game awards, but everything here we kind of knew about already. There was just some gameplay reveals. Yeah, I think, I think overall the coolest like Sonic the movie, uh, Wonder Woman, and Alan Wake, mm -hmm. or like, and, and I guess uh, the Star Wars Eclipse. Those are like the four the four big ones. Yeah, Star Wars but Eclipse is a big that, deal, but. Uh, still uh like it's it's a big deal they're working on a star wars game but yeah. it being uh quantum quantic dream uh i don't know how much i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna want to play it yeah <laughs> it's gonna be very story driven yeah um it's anyway with me, but... uh yo alec is banking thanks for the 14 months and yo youth hurt thanks for the hundo bits i appreciate you Oh, and uh, Melark with the seven months. Bob, I got Mario Maker 2 for my birthday finally. Oh my god, yay. Nice. Congrats, bro. Uh, and that's it. Mm -hmm. All right. Where else are we? Uh, oh, Banjo-Kazooie, Will. What's going on with that? Yes. Uh, Banjo's on a mission to rescue his sister from the envious wicked witch Gruntilda. Foil her selfish plan to snatch the beauty from Tootie in Banjo Kazooie, available on Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack in January. So we now know when the second uh, new game for N64 on Switch Online is coming. It's in January. Wow, that they announced this like a day after they announced freaking uh Paper Mario. Yeah. Like so they, it was kind of crazy how quickly after they they announced this. Why yeah. not save it for January? <laughs> uh well, I appreciate that they're showing us the roadmap that they are they are going to put out the games that they said they were going to put out on there. Um I appreciate that there's some sort of frequency with the releases, unlike Super Nintendo and NES, where they just stopped. <laughs> um, no one's saying they won't do that here either. That, I know that I was going to say, you know, I fully expect them to stop eventually. <laughs> and it would be nice if we got more than one game a month, but, you know, it's a start. <laughs> so, uh, I, one thing I appreciate with these announcements. The high res box art. Yes. It's kind of a big deal to have a uh, high res uh, N64 box art. Yeah. Uh, even on, on the Nintendo Switch Online app, there's some really high res box art there. Um, yeah. But I think they might have done this because, like, they got a weird amount of, like, hate for releasing uh, the Paper Mario announcement, saying that, the, like, dropping Paper Mario on Switch or saying when that was dropping. 
yeah. people were like, oh, great, we're only getting one. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, them saying that this is coming, I guess, was to maybe uh, kind of shut those people up. Shut people up, yeah. Uh, so I think it was they announced Paper Mario and then they released it. And then like the day after they released it, they they announced when Banjo-Kazooie is coming. Right. It just says January, though. It doesn't say an actual hard date. Anyway, it's a pretty yeah, big deal because it's not even Nintendo. Yeah. It's rare. Yeah. But hopefully that means we'll get more rare games like Banjo-Tooie and Jet Force Gemini and oh, Last Core. Oh, of and course. And uh, Perfect Dark. Yeah, save that one for last, why don't you? Of course. <laughs> uh, this link That is probably a... will come last. This link isn't working for me. Uh, Which one? The PlayStation 5 face plates. Uh, it literally just worked for me. 403 error. The request could not be satisfied. <laughs> uh, I've heard that one before. <laughs> Hold on a second. I can just friggin' find it on PlayStation blog. Yeah, it's on the PlayStation blog. Next uh, news is PlayStation 5 faceplates. Wow. Yeah, so that's why they've been suing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh so first they announced that we're getting three new controller colors uh nova pink starlight blue and galactic purple i think my uh, vpn is screwing me up because i really? can't even get to the playstation blog at all oh wow i'll pull it up on twitter it's fine okay uh so nova pink starlight blue and galactic purple uh, adding to the previously released Cosmic Red and Midnight Black DualSense uh, controllers. These will be available in January 2022. Uh, and also announced that the PS5 will be getting uh, matching uh, side panels. You can, so you can finally get uh, what well, they call it PS5 console covers. Uh, we're also introducing new PS5 console covers to match all of the Galaxy-inspired DualSense wireless controllers in midnight black cosmic red nova pink starlight blue and galactic purple these are freaking awesome these are so cool uh they are beautiful and easy to use uh the ps5 console covers will be available for both the ps5 with blu-ray drive and the all digital edition and are sold separately uh from the ps5 console and the dual sense controller i guess i gotta get the black one right Oh, yeah, you got to match the controller. I do love that uh, the the turquoise one, and the controller yeah. looks cool. And I like the pink. This this like ruby red is pretty cool. Uh, I have the controller. That's that color. Yeah. Um, but the pink is really cool. Oh man! So pink a pink controller with that turquoise looking uh, uh, cover would be sick. So the red and black uh, covers will be available in January. Uh, and the pink, purple, and starlight blue covers will be available in the first half of 2022. Ugh. I guess I'm getting black. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I, I don't think it's on the blog, but I believe the covers are going to retail for $50. I heard 55 Probably right. <laughs> uh, because people were arguing. I think RGT was arguing with somebody. Not arguing, but just like, cause, cause people were upset that the D brand ones were fifty dollars, and mm -hmm. I think PlayStations are fifty five, or something. Yeah, it's like slightly more. So, uh, yeah, uh, Tech Nanner says seems yeah. expensive. Well, the PlayStation 55. Five, the PlayStation Five is five hundred dollars. So, <laughs> I think fifty dollars is pretty uh, reasonable for that. You're right; it is fifty five. I mean, if D brand selling theirs for fifty, I mean fifty five, kind of seems reasonable. It is, but at the same time, it is just a piece of plastic. It's two pieces of plastic. Mm -hmm. I think the face plates for the Xbox three hundred and sixty when those came out were only like twenty bucks each. They were a penny at GameStop because nobody ever bought them, and they used to just throw them out. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I feel like maybe forty bucks might be fair. This. It is a little bit of a premium for what these are. Mm -hmm. I just know uh, 
uh, that 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 they're like kind of a necessity because the friggin' white yeah. ain't it. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, there's really there was no need to sue to keep these. So if you're gonna release them, like just release them. You didn't have to sue everybody because those are accessories. People are allowed to make accessories for your system. I think did they have a PlayStation logo on the D brand one? No, D brand specifically like made mock logos of everything to try and skirt the the lawsuit. No, even even the PlayStation cutout, I guess. Mm-hmm. They had the robot logo thing. Well, they, no, but what about mm-hmm. the cutout? Was there nothing cut out? I don't think there was anything cut out. Good. Well, never mind them. Then yeah, they shouldn't have done it. They should have just left it because people would have bought the PlayStation One if they wanted to play. If they wanted the PlayStation One, yeah, the stuff. PlayStation Ones like would have been available in more retailers than D brands. It's so because they wanted to see what the. It's because they wanted that extra five bucks. Yeah, that was it. All right. Uh, apparently, we'll uh, get ready for when we do the uh, the Q and A section of the podcast because apparently, I pissed off a lot of PlayStation fans. <laughs> I did. Week. I did. Uh, I did catch a glimpse of that before the show started, and yeah, yeah, people don't like you. <laughs> we'll 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 cross that bridge when we get there. Will we'll see what yeah. happens. I don't understand why you're a cuddly teddy bear. Hey, our viewership went up. It's time for everybody to tab in because we got to redo <laughs> the prime ad. Everybody, <laughs> check it out, baby. Here we go. Start tracking the bounty, and done. All right. All right. Taze Wild, thanks for the prime. See? He knows what's up. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Anyway, now we can talk about Bully 2, question mark? So I put question mark because there's a lot of kerfuffle on Twitter about whether or not uh, Bully 2 is actu- was actually uh, demoed at the Game Awards. But it looks like what the reporting was accurate uh so bully 2 could be on the way with a planned reveal of a potential sequel reportedly pulled from the game awards last week according to leaker tom henderson a sequel to bully rockstar slightly more pg-13 take on the gta formula was expected as a potential surprise reveal at last week's award show henderson claimed that a source had been shown some material alluding to a reveal soon including a game in playable state but that information is a bit blurry at the moment. Weird. Then, so it yes. was it, uh, it was pulled. Yes. Like they, they, it like, was like planned were... to be sh- Okay. Yeah, it was planned to be shown at the Game Awards, but apparently for some reason it was pulled. Uh and this, there wasn't really said why. Henderson uh, isn't the only person hinting at something Uh, To do with Bully, Game Informer Senior Associate Editor Blake Hester tweeted a picture of the game's logo yesterday with the caption, New story coming to you soon. While Henderson suggested that it could be related to information pertaining to a sequel, Game Informer video host Alex Van Ecken has dismissed this by saying that this is definitely not what the tweet was referring to. Alex, man. Then what was it, dude? (laughs) What is it? Tell me. DM me. <laughs> I need to know. <laughs> We're friends. Be my friend. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that's what I meant by like Bully 2 question mark because the one guy was saying that they were going to show off Bully 2 and then didn't. And then somebody else said that he has a story about Bully in general. And then the other guy said, oh, that's about Bully 2. And now they're saying, no, it isn't. So it's just a back and forth. Then what is it? Of like, I don't know. But, but allegedly, I, Bully 2 was shown and then not shown. The biggest story here, the biggest shock to me, is that there was never a Bully 2? I thought there were two Bullies. <laughs> no, there was Bully uh, released on the PS2 back in like, 2006. And then there was a port uh, on the 360 and the Wii. <laughs> mm-hmm. But never, but never another bully. Okay, that's what that was. Yeah. Eric in the chat says maybe we should bully them into showing it. We could do that. <laughs> ha ha, ha ha ha. 
Uh, so that's interesting. I, I mean, yeah. what's most interesting about this is that uh, Jeff Keighley was like rushing through the show, making it look like they were running out of time. And if they pulled yeah. a whole game announcement, that's weird. They could have had more time. Yeah. Especially a game announcement from Rockstar. Yeah. Imagine, imagine they pulled it for time. Imagine they're like, sorry, yeah. Rockstar, we can't announce your game. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. <laughs> Anyway, next up, we have Nintendo Switch and Xbox Series take top slots in U.S. console sales. Wow, weird. Yeah. Where's uh, the PlayStation, boys? I, that's a good question. Uh, retail sales tracker NPD Group said console hardware sales in November have fallen off by 38% to 883 million in November compared to the same month in 2020, which is when the new PlayStation and Xbox launched. That drop comes despite a uh, still intense desire to obtain the systems as well as the availability of the new version of the Nintendo Switch. Uh, this past November, the Switch still dominated sales, and the data shows that combined, the new and old versions sold 1.13 million units last month, including 550,000 in the week of Black Friday and Thanksgiving. Just like it was in October, it's the system people can actually get and it has topped the sales charts for 35 of the last 36 months. Sony and Microsoft didn't eagerly uncover detailed sales data, but MPD analyst Matt Piscatella confirmed in a tweet that the Xbox Series family came in second in unit sales. Regular and extended availability of the slightly less powerful and much cheaper Series S likely explains their position in November and might suggest one of the might suggest one way for those interested in next-gen gaming while the chip shortage uh, Grinch keeps a tight hold on supplies. So so I think two things happened here. One of them was Halo. Mm -hmm. And the other one was the Series S. I'm glad people are seeing yes. the value in the Series S. I mean, people want to play Halo and they can't get their grubby hands on a Series X. Maybe uh, it's hard to find or maybe... Uh, uh, it's just too expensive. Series S is a great entryway into that. Uh, oh, our yeah. friend Greg couldn't find a Series X, and he works at Best Buy. <laughs> um, we literally could have just stolen one. <laughs> could have stole one. Should have stole one, but couldn't. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, this is interesting news because the the Xbox consoles have usually, if we're comparing sales between Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox, Xbox has been on the bottom this whole generation so far yeah so uh it's uh it's it, this is kind of a, a big deal and playstation kind of lapped uh uh or kind of came ahead of, of nintendo for like two months and then nintendo yeah. came back up yeah so that's where we're at now uh i wonder what's gonna happen for the holidays uh we have uh december and then we'll see. Uh, yeah, well, I guess no, still going. That was Black Friday, I guess. November, this NPD was, yeah. was talking about the deals for Black Friday. And I guess people were going yeah. with. Then it must have been uh, the Series S because that's, I mean, what people are going to be buying other people for Christmas. If we were kids, yeah. that's what I would be asking for because it's cheaper. <laughs> and it's not like our parents would have had 4K TVs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would have been like, why do I need to see that? I'm old. I can't see anyway. Yeah. Anyway, uh, hey, uh, where am I? The Mecha Dragon, thanks for the eight months. Seeing ads on the podcast reminds me I need to subscribe to you, bros. You all are a fun. You all are fun to watch. Thanks, dude. Hey, if you Thank subscribe you. with Amazon Prime, you link it to your Twitch account. You subscribe with Twitch Prime. Hey, man, you don't get any ads except you might get the yeah. because you might get the one that we play if we play one twice, twice accidentally. Uh, Ganthet, thanks for the four months. Did I say that already? And Skyru, thank you for the Prime subscription. Appreciate you, people. The actual supporters, the real ones. Yeah, the actual ads, the real uh, OGs. Last news. Explain this to me. I need. I need an adult to explain this to me. Uh, you can play the original 1991 Sonic the Hedgehog. On a Tesla. <laughs> okay. How does uh, this happen? So you, 
Uh, well, to play games on the Tesla in-car screen, owners must need uh, owners just need to plug in a USB controller. Just don't try to play while you're driving. Sonic the Hedgehog joins Tesla's growing lineup of games, including Cuphead, The Witcher, and The Witcher Three. <laughs> So a Tesla, the Tesla dashboard, like the screen is, I think, just an Android based screen like tablet. So it, it's powerful enough to run games. I actually know somebody who owns and drives a Tesla and he played Cuphead on it because he, he brought a controller and he played it on the screen. So, yeah. How do you what? just any Bluetooth controller, I guess? Yeah. Or a USB controller. Oh, you could just straight up plug in a USB controller. Interesting. Yeah. So I guess an Xbox controller would probably work the best. Yeah, Xbox. I think he. I think he used his PlayStation Four controller. Just plugged it in. Weird. So do you have to buy the game, or does it just come on the Tesla? I think it just comes with the Tesla. All of these games. Could, yeah, because it says nothing about like the App Store or how much it's going to cost to play Sonic the Hedgehog on on a Tesla. How to play Cuphead on Tesla. Uh, he's this guy's like on his on a website here. What do you mean? I'm watch I'm watching a guy to tell you how to oh. play Cuphead. You legit just plug in a controller and play it. They don't yeah. they don't explain anything. I remember there was like for a while Elon Musk was trying to get Mario Kart on te uh to be playable on a Tesla and Nintendo flat out said no. Yeah, I don't that good luck, buddy. <laughs> um Bob, new video, get a Tesla and show off playing Sonic. Yep. Yep. I think Austin John might have a video similar to that. Because he has a Tesla. And if you meet yeah. him, he'll let you know about it. <laughs> More than happy most, to tell you about his Tesla. <laughs> most Tesla drivers are like that. They're like the air fryer owners of the car world. <laughs> oh, are they? Yes. Mm. Do you have an air fryer? Oh, you didn't know I have an it's air fryer? It's Twitter Week time! Check it out, buckos. We got a new tweet hot off the presses for you. This one's from Garfield thrown out the window. This is just a Twitter account where it's just Garfield comics but every comic is the last panel is replaced with him getting thrown out the window <laughs> dinner is ready Garfield and it's him leaping <laughs> off of his chair and then just getting thrown out the window wow <laughs> it's a good I can't tweet wait. I can't wait for that to be in the Chris Pratt movie <laughs> yo and the freaking at the twitter at is at yeet Garfield <laughs> I don't know why. That's a very funny panel. Him just upside down out the window. That is, that is good. Anyway, we're going to talk to you guys right now. Yes. First, we will talk to everybody who was mad at Bob <laughs> over on, who left a comment on last week's podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash wolf 10 podcast. But after that, start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. I'm, I can't wait for this. Uh, hey, underscore. No, wait, no. This I went into friggin' our our mod chat by accident. Get out of here. All right. Well, I see one that I know you you have an answer for. So, well, Chad Let, Dominique says, Bob, if you're legit going to play Persona Five, be sure to play Royale. The quality of life changes and extra story elements included make the game so much better than the base version. Uh, I talked about this before, like, like I talked about this uh, on another stream too. Uh, I might give it a try. I don't know when the hell I'm going to, but I, I, I feel like, uh, I, I will definitely play the newest version of Persona 5 if I play Persona 5, uh, okay. but who knows? Uh, John Martinez says, Bob is turning into Re Re Review Tech USA <laughs> with this whole PS5 power off BS. In all seriousness, turn off PS5, wait for the lights to flash and turn and turn off then unplug from from the power. I'll remind you once again. I don't remove it from power. It just tells me that I did. I never do, but it tells me that I did. Um, it might it might even be plugged into a battery backup. To be completely <laughs> honest with you, that's how much I'm not bullshitting you. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, that is how to power down safely. I know how to power down safely. Yanking the cord. I don't yank the cord. <laughs> On or rest mode, electricity blackouts, power surge failures. I might be in a backup. Uh, make it complain about power cycling correctly. Of course... But of course, Bob doesn't accept some things in reality like pronouncing 8-bit do <laughs> or Mario Party settings turn off bonus stars. Okay, Mario Party settings to turn off bonus stars should be on by default. 8-bit uh, do, that's how you pronounce it from the company itself. So you're they wrong on that. emailed him and he still has the email <laughs> saying that's how you pronounce it. Also, my Xbox which is right fucking here, plugged into the exact same thing that my PlayStation is plugged into, never gives me a fucking problem about how I turn it off. And it has the exact same always on setting that the PlayStation has. And it always updates my stuff correctly. Every time I turn it on, everything's already updated and all the updates are installed and ready to go every time I want to play it. PlayStation never fucking does that because it always says, you turned me off wrong when I never fucking did. Also, another thing, during the podcast last week when I was complaining about this, Wood took a Twitter video of him walking over to his PS4, turning it on. I'm sorry, walking over to his PS5, turning it on, and the PS5 says, you turned me off wrong. And he goes, every time that happens, you are right, Bob. Ah, fuck you guys. And it's 8-bit do. HL says, the amount of bullshit I hear Bob spouting is hilarious. This guy is losing his credibility. All right, buddy. Uh, unsubscribe. Capello Zappellini, which is the most Italian name I've ever heard in my life. Buongiorno. Says, I'm going to tear my hair out. Already did, buddy. Uh, Bob, what the hell is wrong with you? The PS5 <laughs> UI, first of all, is so easy. My girlfriend, oh no. Oh no. He's mansplaining the PS5 UI to me now. Uh, my girlfriend, who never plays games perfectly, gets it and uses it as a media center. And secondly, who the hell unplugs their console? I never fucking unplug it! Why do these people think I'm unplugging it? <laughs> when did I say I unplug? They're, they're gaslighting me like the PlayStation does. The PlayStation tells me I unplug the thing. And these guys are now telling me that I unplug the thing. I'm not crazy! I'm not! <laughs> It fucking happens. I swear to God. <laughs> Who the hell unplugs that console every time you absolute maniac? Because now I'm not even sure you mentioned unplugging. It I don't not. unplug it. It just unplugs. It tells me I unplug it, but I don't. You're all. Everybody in my life is gaslighting me into thinking that I unplugged the thing. <laughs> now the bit rate's dropping on the stream. Fuck. Okay. Oh, the recording paused. Everything's horrible on this stream. Oh, uh, Carlos Cass Cassiano says, regarding the PS Now subscription. Oh, thank God. We're on to something else. I tried it a few months ago. Mostly wanted to play PS2 and PS3 games to play some old games I wanted to. It did not work at all. First of all, the service did, did not connect properly. And then I realized it it is not supported in many countries outside the USA. From Puerto Rico here. After this, I got a VPN, and the VPN was not fast enough for me to connect to the service. It was fast enough to load 4K videos and, con and content, but when I tried to connect it to the service, the system to play the old school games, which can only be played via the cloud and cannot be stored and played locally, does a, lo does a sort of speed test and always got the message that the connection was not fast enough, got my money back, and did not look back. Very sad. Uh, where... Where did he? S oh, Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. Puerto Rico. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. feel like y there might be some major issues uh, with with uh, streaming services in other countries. Yeah. No. Uh, def there definitely would be. And I guess this new uh, PlayStation Now that they're working on, or PlayStation Plus Plus or whatever. Uh, hopefully, that's a priority. Getting it in more countries more like available in more countries especially like puerto rico is technically part of the united states they could set it up there fairly easily their the chat's telling me there's a buzz on my end did i break the mic <laughs> i don't know whatever we're almost done anyway yeah. deal with it for two seconds yeah um 
Anyway, now we're in the chat for like a little bit, and then we'll we'll yeah. skedaddle. I, I, is there? Come on, there's people here who have had their PlayStation fives yell at them for turning it off wrong when you didn't. Uh, a man anyway. Downski says, "I only had it happen once, but I get that you have it because my USB drive always gets an error that it was unplugged incorrectly, and it literally hasn't been touched or moved. So I really get it. It's not just you." I, let's. I don't. Is it plugged into my capture card? It is. Boys, we're gonna we're gonna freaking we're gonna we're gonna check it out. All right. Well, you Oops. think because it's plugged into your capture card, it's giving you that message? No, no. I just want to prove to them this happens every freaking time. Okay. <laughs> I don't even think it's actually plugged into my capture card. It's not switching over to my capture card. Oh, no. This might have been a problem. Uh, Kate McCat, do you think it's maybe a problem with launch PS5s? I believe I believe you that it happens. I've just never had I've just never had it, but you got mine, but I got mine in July-ish, I think. Hey man, you know what? I'm glad that you believe me. Oh, it's not it's not plugged in HDMI. Oh. Yeah. That might be a problem. Mega Man 87, maybe you should unplug it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll teach you a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, my friend had a launch PS5. He had to return for a whole new console because of fan issues. Oh, my God. Jeez. Have you got HDMI CEC turned on? I don't even know what that is. What would that have to do with power consumption? I got a lot of problems over here, Will. Uh, Bob, I started playing Ocarina of Time, and you are right; it is very confusing. I I shouldn't didn't mention this on the podcast. I beat it yesterday. I beat Ooh. Ocarina of Time. You. I've done a lot of things in my gaming career, and beating Ocarina of Time was the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> I've played the Ross's levels. I play. I played through Cyber Shadow, and and. Uh, and 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 Ocarina of Time is the hardest thing I've ever done because uh, it took me it took a lot of uh it took a lot to force myself to play that game because I I was not <laughs> having fun. It is not a game for for Bob at all. You didn't have fun at all. There was I had a little bit of fun especially in the beginning. And I'll tell you what, if I didn't have chat walking me through the whole game, I would yeah. not have wanted to keep playing that game i was not so you mean into to it. tell me the chat basically were your guide you were the player and the chat was your guide the Absolutely. chat was your player's guide yes so 1, you had 000%. a player's guide with you while you played the game yeah yep very similar to how people back in 1998 had a player's guide to help get them through the game one thousand percent, I had a player's good. So we have proven that the only reason why people beat Ocarina of Time <laughs> is because they had a player's guide to guide them through the game. There is so much in that game that I would never have been able to figure out without people telling me. And if I did figure it out on my own, it would have taken me hundreds of hours. Yeah. There's so many little things that just don't make any sense until you do it at that. And also, another thing about Ocarina of Time. I'm just here to piss off every fandom ever. <laughs> every, there's things that you'll do in the game. You'll be like, oh, obviously on this thing, I have to use that item I just got. You'll take the item out, use it, and it won't work. And you'll go, oh, I guess that wasn't it. And then you'll try everything else. Then you'll go back around the whole dungeon. You'll be like, why? Where do I go? I don't understand. Then you'll go back to that place and you go, let me try that item one more time. And you'll do it and it'll work the second time you try it. But the first time... It just won't work for whatever reason because it's friggin' N64 and things just don't work right sometimes. <sighs> but I understand why, like as a nine-year-old in the in the friggin' the 64-bit era, it would yeah. blow your mind. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. It is one of the best N64 games, but it is uh, it is frustrating. Uh, so you can't get your PS5? Nah, I connected? couldn't figure out how to get the capture yeah. to work. Maybe that's my problem. Yeah. Maybe uh, uh, maybe I'm fucking dumb. Well, 
according to Majestical, first time chat, uh, I had the issue until I turned off power supply to USB ports in rest mode. I didn't even what? know you could do that. Oh, I will do. I'll try that. I'll try that because I have no reason to have power to the USBs. Yeah. You loved it. Stop lying. <laughs> uh, all right. That's it, boys. Thanks for hanging out. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on those respective platforms. Guys, thanks for hanging out and uh, thanks for sticking out through our uh, test of the bounty board on Twitch. Uh, yes. I don't know if we're ever going to do that again, <laughs> but it was <laughs> it was a fun little time while we did it. Uh, who's live right now? This week's uh, we're, we're going to the end of the year, so uh, yeah. uh, things are going to be weird, uh, especially for streams. But uh, uh, thanks for watching the podcast. If you stuck it out this long on the YouTube video, slap a like on there, you idiot, and you should come to Twitch every once in a while, you know? Yeah. Uh, hey, Jackson uh, shaved his face. Should we go say something to him? Yes. <laughs> what would be a funny thing to say to Jackson about his his the fact that he has no beard? Ever Just call him no beard. <laughs> Um, no, we can do better than that. Hey, no beard. Say, say, just write cute. Just write cute. <laughs> Let's go to his chat and write cute. And we'll see you later. I'm going to try my best to stream Thursday. I make no promises. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.